Hi, I'm Peter, and today I'm going to show you how to create a WordPress layout using Visual Composer, otherwise known as WP Bakery. So, a lot of our sites that we build for our clients and all of our friends, we put them onto this nice little layout builder called WP Bakery. What this allows us to do is create some really fancy advanced layouts with almost little to no code or any kind of CSS, like you can do this just yourself on your WordPress website. So let's go in and actually see how we can create our own, what I like to still refer to as a visual composer layout. So I'm just logged into my dashboard. If you're unsure how to get to your WordPress dashboard, definitely check out our other videos and documents on how to log into WordPress. But I'm just gonna go over to pages and I'm gonna add a new page. So first off, I should title my page right away. We're gonna make a nice page for our office dog. Cooper Miller. Perfect. So now right off the bat, before I start adding content into the page, I'm going to turn on the actual Visual Composer. So right here, since I have the plugin activated in my theme, I can just go and click on Backend Editor, and then this will turn on the actual Visual Composer layout. So within the Visual Composer layout, the first thing I'm going to do is add in a new element. So I'll click Add Element. And as you can see, there's a whole lot of options here of things that I can add in to my actual layout. But before I start, I always need to have at least one row created in order to put in content. So I'm gonna click on this row element. And then here we go, I have my first Visual Composer row. So what can I do with this row? Well, I can change this row to have different column sets. So if I just hover over here where we see the actual columns, right now it's a full one-to-one -one column. I can make this half and half columns so I can have text on the left and image on the right for instance or any other variation of the columns. You can also create a custom column and then just put in some kind of a measurement such as one-third to two-third or one-quarter to three-quarter and then update. I'm just going to click close on that. So now that I have these two columns, I'm just going to add in my elements to these columns. So we'll start on the left where I'm going to add in my usual text block. So I'll click add right in the column and I can find the element that I need, and in this case, it is the text block. So I'll just click on that, and then you get your standard text editor that you might be used to from editing standard WordPress posts. So I can add in my content here. I'm just gonna create a few more lines of content, and maybe create a title here. If you're unfamiliar with how to modify text and add links and such to your text content, check out our other video on creating WordPress posts. So I'm just going to change this to uh, heading 2 here and save the changes. There we go. So I have my text block. Now over on the right, I'm going to add in a image. So I'm just going to click on the plus inside of this column. And then I need to find the in single image element. If it doesn't pop out right away, you can actually search for it in the top right corner of this window. I'm just gonna start typing image to pull up every single type of image element. So there's a lot of them here. We're not gonna go through every single one, just the important one, which is the single image. So I'll just click on that. And now in this actual block, I can see all of my options. So first off, I can see my image source is just from my media library. And right here, I can select my image. So I'm just gonna click add image. And I already have a bunch of images loaded up here, but I'm gonna upload a new one. So I'm gonna go upload files, select, and select this image of Cooper that I have ready. So I'll just open that. So that will start uploading to our media library. And 
and there we go. And then make sure you title your image properly, give it some alt text. If you wanna find out more about how to properly size and title your images, check out our other video on making images for web. So I'm just gonna set this image. And there's many other options in every single one of these elements, far too many to go over right now, but take a quick look through always just to see what kind of options are available to you. So I'm just gonna publish this page and see what this looks like. So now the page is published, let's go and have a look. So there we go, we have a simple text block and Cooper is over on the right hand side. Now the last little thing is I can actually get even more fancy with my rows. So back in the editor here, anywhere where you see the little pencil icon, whenever I hover over a text block, hover over a column, image, or even the row itself, you can edit the actual row or any other element to pull up any of its options. So right now in this row, I wanna show a panel that is pretty much in every single element, the design options panel. So the design options panel allows me to play around with some of the spacing as well as background colors or images of any element within the visual composer. So for instance, I can take this row and give it a background color. So I'm not designing anything fancy here, just gonna throw in some random colors. I can even throw in a background image, but I think a color is good for now. And I can also add some padding to this. So I'm gonna add some padding. So typically whenever you're adding any kind of measurement into a website, you should try and use a web unit such as pixels. So that just looks like this. I'm gonna add 50 PX. So I'll add that to the top and to the bottom. And I'll also add some margins. So I'll show what that looks like in a second. And let's add a border, but only on the bottom. So I'm gonna add a four pixel border. And on the right here, I'm gonna give it a color and a style. We'll make it solid. And there we go. So I'll just save that, update, and we'll take a look at what this does to our page. So when I refresh, we have our background and we have our border color. So I can make copies of this as well. So I wanna have another section for maybe another picture and another bio. So if any element next to the pencil, there is always this double little icon here, which is the clone icon. So you can see it on the text box, on the image, or on the row itself. So I'm gonna click that clone row. And with a cloned, I get a perfect copy. This is great if you have a lot of settings and you did a lot of work on a specific element that you just wanna copy all of those settings just so you can change some lines of text and then still have it styled the same way. So on this one, I'm gonna change the layout. I'm gonna put the layout to have one third by two thirds, so just reversing it. And I'm gonna move Cooper's image to the left column and move the text blocks to the right. So you can see how easy it is just to click and drag on any of these elements to move them around, whether into different rows, different columns, or around any of your other elements. Now, I'm gonna hit update on this again and just show you one thing. So, we can see we now have the two elements, both with the same copied styles, but note the space between them. If you remember before, I added 50 margin to the bottom of these elements. So just to note, margin and padding are two different things where padding is on the inside of an element. So you can see the background color of this element. I have the 50 pixels of padding on the inside, on the top and bottom, and then 50 pixels of margin on the outside of the element. So once again, that was if I edit this row under design options, I had 50 pixels of margin actually on the top and the bottom as well as 50 pixels of padding on the inside. And this applies to all elements. Go and edit your single image or your text block 
and you can see that they all have design options for having their own background colors, their own spacing, and so on. So I hope that gives you something to go into your websites with so that you can edit and create your own really fancy, really dynamic layouts using the Visual Composer. There's so much more to explore here that is just too much for this one video, but check out the article that comes with this video for even more details, or the WP Bakery actual help articles where they go into far more detail about all of the aspects of their Visual Composer editor. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below or let us know. And as always, see you next time.